What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. My name is Chuck, this is Mr. Beard, and today we're driving the M3. this car is stiff. So today we are driving my 1995 BMW M3. You notice in the pictures it is purple. It is uh, a color that was 95 only. I know a lot of people are probably looking at it going, oh my god, Techno Violet. I love Techno Violet. You're close. This is actually Daytona Violet. Daytona Violet was only available in 95 on the M3. I'm not sure if it came on any other vehicles uh, in BMW's lineup. It probably did. Um, this, so this is this is not Techno Violet. It is Daytona Violet. If you look at them carefully, from, you know a lot of people probably couldn't tell the difference. They just see kind of a dark purple and go Techno Violet because it's the it's the better known of the two. But this car, if you look at them next to each other, uh, Daytona Violet's a little bit more reddish purple, and Techno Violet's almost a little more bluish purple. Don't you dip your idle on me, BMW. Keep that idle right up there, nice and tight. Right up there. The car has an exhaust, but it's not super loud. But if I get on it, oh, you can hopefully you can hear that. It's a little bit of uh, engine noise. It does have an aftermarket intake, so it does give it a little bellow. The lighting is terrible. So before we get too far into it, let me talk about how I acquired this car. So if you've seen any of my previous videos on the channel, the early ones, you know, I had a 1992 Mazda Miata. I had, you know, done a lot of work. I bought it in really rough shape. I did a lot of work to it to get it kind of like autocross ready. And my, my goal was to get it to the track. And I don't know if you can tell in this car, my head is almost touching the headliner. I'm a big guy. I'm, I'm almost six foot five or six foot five, depending on who's measuring me. That's a lot of man to fit in a Miata. So uh, <laughs> it was a fun car, I loved it. It worked really well for autocross, but when I started getting serious about getting it to the track, I started, you know, I bought, actually bought two different race seats to put in it. I sat on the floor, my, the roll bar I had, um, I, I kind of like did a lot of measuring and, and taking pictures to kind of figure out, you know, is it possible for me to get in there and get safely under the roll bar? You know, people a lot of times will, you know, slouch down or do whatever they can do to, to fit. I, I wanted it to be safe. I didn't want to, you know, end up at the track and, God forbid, flip the car or something and then die. That was that was not my, not my first goal of driving the Miata. So, uh, if I finally came to the conclusion that without getting an after or a, a custom roll bar that was tall enough to, to prevent the use of a hard top or a regular top for that matter, it was just not feasible for me to get safely enough below the roll bar while wearing a helmet um, to make me to make me really comfortable. I don't know if I have a lot of you know torso uh, height or whatever. I've seen I've seen plenty of people on the internet do it, but it just wasn't going to be right for me. So I decided I got to find something else. I want to find a car with a roof. I don't want to have to worry about the you know the the open open top car laws and special special considerations at track days you know this car i'd like to eventually put a roll, roll cage in anyway but for now it does have this you know the semi-structural rigidity of the actual having a roof so i started looking around i was like oh maybe a porsche 944 maybe a bmw m3 you know what what's kind of in my price range i wasn't sure what i was going to get out of the miata but i didn't have a whole lot of money to spend so I sold the Miata. I actually sold it for just over four thousand dollars with, you know, some extra parts. I, I had done a ton of work to it. I had probably more than, no, actually, definitely more than four thousand dollars into it. But I sold it to a nice guy, younger guy, who was gonna, you know, take it out and autocross it and do cool stuff with it. So I appreciate that. I hope that guy's taking care of it. I hope he loves it. But I came to the conclusion 
I've always been, a, uh, you know, always been a BMW fan. I've owned quite a few. I've had, you know, a couple E30s and E90s, stuff like that. And I decided, you know, I'm, I'm going to try to find an E36 M3 because it's the, it's the cheapest M3 currently um, that will fit in my budget and fit my needs. talked with 50 maybe 60 people about different cars tracked down a lot of leads I went and looked at quite a not quite a few but a few of them locally uh, you know email back and forth with people in other states I, I did not have a small window of uh, where I was willing to look I was willing to drive and go get stuff so uh, for the right car so I set my budget at like 5,500 under six grand and you know that way I could basically sell the Miata get what I got out of it and then use a tiny bit of money to get on top of it you know six grand doesn't get you a whole lot of, of M3 let me tell you so I, I went and looked at a few and they were just trashed beyond belief my I wasn't picky about a whole lot but I did want a few specific things it had to be a coupe it had to be manual transmission and uh, it had to not be red <laughs> nothing against red cars I've just had a few and I don't want another. Jones and Hardcore for the perps. Loves the purples. Dude was like, I got a silver M3, but I wish it was purple. So after searching forever, I eventually found this car on Bimmer Forums. A guy was selling it. He was six hours away from me in uh, North Carolina. You know, I emailed back and forth. It sounded really good. It was, you know, it was track prepped. It was a California car. He had just moved from California uh, to, to New, uh, sorry, North Carolina like six months or a year earlier. Wasn't driving it a whole lot and decided, you know, it's time to let it go. I happened to find it. It had been on Bimmer Forums for a little while, so I don't know if he was just in a weird spot, like nobody, you know, nobody saw it or nobody took the time to talk to him. But he, you know, he was very responsive. He went back, told me a bunch of stuff about the car. I found a bunch of other threads where they were talking about the car on uh, Bimmer Forums. I actually found YouTube videos from the guy's channel where he was tracking it in California, and you know, uh, it worked out. I, I told him, you know, I'll be there this weekend. It was in the price range I was looking for. I borrowed a trailer. Thanks, Rob. My buddy who does Spec E30 racing, I borrowed his trailer. He let me go down there and pick it up. My dad rode with me and we brought it back. We went down, test drove it, worked out. I ended up paying just over five grand for this car. It came with a ton of extra parts. <laughs> going nuts all right so let's get into the let's get into the mods on the car the car is set up to be basically an autocross slash track car so it does have tons of suspension mods some engine mods some comfort exterior and interior stuff but it is stiff you can see me bouncing around here um, it's not forgiving the all the bushings and everything that have been replaced are noisy and just it's not it's not built for comfort this car does have K-Mac front camber plates. It has basically every bushing of the suspension system, including like engine mounts, trans mounts, things like that replaced. Most of them are poly, and most of them are like UUC or some, whatever that brand is. Um, there are uh, ground control coilovers. It has Coney yellow shocks. They have the adjustable ones. You can take, you know, take that little knob and spin the top and adjust the uh, dampener stiffness. It has a, an X brace, which basically ties the bottom part of the subframe together. It has. It came with a couple sets of sway bars. Right now, it's running the stock sway bars. The guy said he was like using, you know, whatever class he was in or in the last autocross. He wanted to keep it in whatever class he was so he couldn't have upgraded sway bars so um, it came with also a set of iBox sway bars which I plan to put on I'm going to hopefully do a video about that engine wise it has a uh, three and a half inch HFM which is like the housing that holds the airflow meter or the mass airflow sensor or whatever you want to call it um, it is I think a lot on a lot of Euro cars but it's basically bigger than the, the inlet on uh, 
the standard E36, so it's supposed to let more air through. With that, it has a Turner Motorsports chip, so it's like a performance chip that you pop into the ECU and it, you know, adjusts fuel ratios and whatever else it has to do to, I don't know what it does. Uh, it does have an active AutoWorks exhaust. It's almost silent, so, so if, it, if noise is something you want, this active AutoWorks is something, exhaust is not what you need. You want something, you want something louder, go with something else. But I actually, it does have a nice note to it. It's not super, you know, it, it's basically silent, but if you put the windows down, you can hear it a tiny bit. And, you know, it's not annoying and loud. This car is loud enough as it is. I don't think I need an exhaust at the moment. Whoa, another E36 M3. What's up, buddy? Are you going to wave at me? Are you going to wave at me? Hey, buddy. Oh, I got the nod. Got the old nod. Love that guy. I don't know who you are, but I love you. Uh, quickly, interior, exterior wise, it, this car does have a set of. Uh, they're, the guy said they're the LTW, you know, BMW, lightweight, whatever you want to call them, wheels. I'm not positive that they are. They may be uh, replicas, but they've been powder coated like a dark silver, like a Nagaro silver sort of color. And I think the lips were polished at one point. They're getting kind of dirty and ratty at the moment because they can, you know, tracking in all the brake dust and they're sitting there eating away at the wheels. But they do look good. I like the dark silver on this purple color. I think it kind of improves the, uh, you know, mean appearance of it. It does also have, I think they're called ZKWs, the, the glass, you know, smoked kind of ellipsoid style headlight. Um, interior wise, um, let's see, it has a, the European three spoke steering wheel with the airbag. So it does still have the airbag. Uh, it has an, you know, aftermarket shift knob and shift boot. It has uh, the Vader style seats. Uh, I don't know. I'm assuming it came with the Vader style seats from the factory. These are replacements. I know that because uh, this car was equipped with heated seats and these seats have no heating elements. <laughs> Besides that, I, I just did the, if you watched my previous video, I just did the suede headliner, so it's not bumping my head anymore. Go me. Let's see, behind me. That's about it in here. It does need some work. The interior's not in great shape. You know, the door cards are peeling off as usual. Um, whatever, you know, besides that, it's passable for what I need it for. So what would I like to do to this car? Well, this car, it, you know, first you have to understand its purpose. I bought this car to replace the Miata with the intent of getting to the track. You know, I still like to go to autocrosses here and there, but autocrosses for me, uh, you know, it's not a great use of time and there's a lot of standing around and waiting in parking lots for you to get maybe 10 minutes of driving. I decided if, you know, if I'm gonna only have, uh, you know, half a dozen to a dozen uh, weeks, weekends out of the year to go, you know, spend a day and, and play with cars like that, then I, you know, I wanted to do something that was going to give me a little bit more seat time. So track days or high performance driving events or whatever you want to call them is where I kind of where I had to go. So this car is already set up pretty well suspension wise. Engine wise, I'm going to leave it alone for now. Just I just got to do a lot of maintenance. It may need another Vanos unit. I'm not positive. It does rattle a little bit on startup. If anybody knows anything about that, please feel free to let me know. Um, uh, I've already done the braking system on it, so I've flushed, I think I've, I may need to flush the fluid. I don't know if, I can't remember if I did that or not. I may do that before this first track event, but I did replace the pads and rotors with StopTech uh, drilled and slotted rotors and StopTech pads. I have a set of Hawk um, track pads that I'll probably swap in before a track day, but these are a little bit more forgiving on and a little bit less noisy on everyday driving. So, uh, what what I really need to do though is probably a lot of safety or safety style mods. So I have, if you've seen me in my other videos, I sit in that that Corbo Forza Sport chair. It's an FIA certified chair or seat that uh, will be swapped in. I'm going to buy two of them. I only bought one initially because I wanted to check the fitment and make sure it'll fit in here, make sure it'll work, make sure it fits me with my height. Uh, I have a set of brackets that I've already purchased um, off the internet ready to go. So we need to get that done in, a, in an upcoming video. I got to 
figure out how to you know keep the stock seat belts i want to keep the car legal this car does have to be i don't have a trailer so it has to be driven to the track and again if i only get to go to let's say let's say i get to go to a dozen that's probably on the high side a dozen track days a year there's still <laughs> over 300 other days in the year <laughs> that this car would just be sitting in my garage. I want to keep it legal. I want to be able to drive it to work. I want to be able to take it out on the weekends if necessary. So hopefully I can maintain that goal. The car's actually been, already been rebuilt. It's top end been rebuilt twice in its lifetime. The last time was done in 2012 by Castro Motorsports in uh, California. Like I said, this was a California car. It's completely rust free, which is awesome. There's nothing like the bolts underneath, nothing underneath is rusted. And I like, this car has had a pretty rough life. Uh, rough in the sense that it's been driven hard, it's been used for what it should be used for. This car has been tracked. If you see there's, if you see my other videos, there's two stickers on this back window here um, that came from the previous owner. One is a, a track outline of Thunder Hill, and the other is a track outline of Button Willow Raceway. Both of those are in California. Both are really, look like really cool tracks. I've never actually been to either one. This car has been track date or high performance driving event at, both, at least both of those with the previous owner. And then this car actually has had like seven other prior owners. I think it's been passed around quite a bit on Bimmer forums. Um, but I'm hoping that they, you know, yes, they went out and had fun with it, but hopefully they took fairly good care of it. And so far this car has been, you know, pretty reliable. I haven't had any, any real issues. Uh, it fires up every time. It does what I want it to do. It's not forgiving. It's loud. It's, you know, kind of rough around the edges, but so far I really like it. I'm actually driving barefoot at the moment. That's a shoe. It's not on my foot. Um, the reason I'm doing that is, you know, it gives me a little bit of extra room. If you're tall and you wanted to know what a big guy looks like in one of these cars, well, I'm almost 6'5", so here you are. I'm driving it. Feels good. This car does not have uh, a working stereo system at the moment. Um, it did when I bought it. This thing was bumping. It had a huge sub in the trunk and uh, an amp that powered all the speakers, and I pulled all that out and sold it on Craigslist because track car bro the AC does work in this car yeah Let's see if we can downshift it oh yeah something crackled something crackled I was just that camera's bouncing around but it'll give you a good idea of just how stiff this freaking car is I'll try to get on it again for you here in a minute policeman policeman nothing to see over here while I'm sitting at a light where the lighting is good, look guys, thank you so much for watching the video. Hopefully you learned a little bit about the M3. I'll put it in the description down below, all the modifications that are done to it. Um, hopefully we'll get some cool videos out soon about the seats and the other mods and the maintenance and all the other fun stuff we need to do. Go support all the other cool YouTube channels that you love. They put out free content for you and they work hard to do it. Jedda, Jedda, you do not pull out in front of me. That is not nice. Anyway, hope uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Like, subscribe, tell your friends, tell me to, that I suck. Whatever you want to do, I'm willing to hear it. My God, this road is so so terrible, and the suspension. All right, uh, just leave me here in my misery. I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye. It feels good every once in a while to have somebody go, "Hey man, you awesome."